So there's been a lot of hype and a lot of hoopla surrounding Apple's recent release of the brand new M1 Pro and M1 Max MacBook Pros in both 14 and 16 inch versions as of late. And I gotta say, a very impressive numbers indeed out of those chipsets and rightfully so. They're very efficient, getting great battery life and they are producing great power. I'm gonna be reviewing both the M1 Pro and then later on the M1 Max in terms of that 16 inch laptop, but a lot of this will apply to the 14 inch version as well. First up is the M1 Pro, MacBook Pro 16 here for 2021. I have the version that comes with 16 gigabytes of unified RAM, one terabyte of SSD storage, and of course it has that beautiful ProRes Retina display with 120 hertz refresh rate, and of course, the notch. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is my unboxing and first look at the brand new M1 Pro MacBook Pro 16, here for 2021. Coming up. And as we take a look at the specs, I want to let everybody know in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by Apple. I'm not being sponsored by Apple. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Apple is not getting copy approval. That means they're seeing this video for the first time, just like you. Now, this unit was purchased with my own money. I did not receive a review unit from Apple. Pricing for the 14-inch starts at $19.99 US, and pricing for the 16-inch model starts at $24.99 US. For those interested, I'll leave a link in the description below for more information and where you can buy one. Now, one thing to note, these are professional devices that have pricing to match that. In other words, these are very expensive devices, not for the average consumer, in my opinion, but they are pretty powerful for what they can do. But you will pay a pretty penny to get one of these. And with the specs and pricing out of the way, let's find out what you get inside the box. Let's open this up. And lifting the lid, you're greeted by the unit itself. We'll get to that in just a moment. But the first thing that I'm noticing, yeah, I feel that little bit of heft that it has. We'll talk about the weight and size in a moment. But you get your MagSafe connection here. That is a return to normal for the MacBook Pro. That is something that should never have gone away. You do get some documentation. You get some warranty information. And yes, you get some black stickers. And you get a 140 watt power adapter that is using USB-C. So when you connect your MagSafe connector, it connects via USB-C. You could also charge via USB-C in addition to using that MagSafe port. Now, the first thing that you'll notice is that weight, as I mentioned, it's at 4.7 pounds or 2.1 kilograms. Definitely not the lightest thing out there, but they do add some more heft to this because they did add the ports. They added a nice 100 watt battery on this. And of course, that is welcome addition. So I'm not gonna blast them for that. Of course, I'm happy to see that. You'll notice the feet on the bottom, they stick out a little bit to give a little bit more ventilation when it's on a table or a desk. And of course, you'll notice that all metal premium design and the MacBook Pro label etched into the unit. So very premium all around. We'd expect nothing less at this price point and from Apple. All right, let's check out the port selection. We'll start off on the left side where we have the return of the MagSafe connection. And of course, that's great if you trip over a wire. It just pops off and the laptop won't go flying or damaged in any way. And that's actually pretty good. And you get two Thunderbolt 4 USB-C connections and they are full service, meaning they do data charge and display out. And you get a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack with advanced support for high impedance headphones. Nice. And moving over to the right side, you get the return of the full-size SD card reader. Now that is certainly a welcome addition indeed. As a content creator, I certainly appreciate that. But one thing to note, the cards do not sit flush with the unit. It sticks out quite a bit. And next to that, you get a third Thunderbolt 4 USB-C port. Again, full service, meaning data charge display out. And another welcome port next to that. And that would be, of course, an HDMI 2.0 port. Although I would have preferred an HDMI 2.1. 
But at the end of the day, I'll take it. The return of these ports are definitely something as a content creator I do appreciate. All right, let's talk about the display. And Apple's made a big deal about this display. And for good reason, it really is excellent. What we're looking at here is a 16.2 inch display, mini LED backlit display with what Apple calls a liquid retina XDR technology. It has a resolution of 3456 by 2234. And Apple claims that this display can get as bright as 1,000 nits in sustained brightness and up to 1,600 nits in terms of peak brightness. Now, I didn't get anywhere near that. The closest I could get to that was 510 nits after playing with some of the settings, but that's as bright as it would go. Now, don't get me wrong. This is an extremely bright display, just not what Apple claimed it to be. So that's just something to be aware of. Now, it is a slightly glossy display. You will notice some glare and reflections in certain lighting conditions, nothing too terrible. And you get some really deep blacks, excellent white points, and of course, really great contrast with this mini LED technology. And this is a color accurate display as I measured 1.30 Delta E score. Remember, anything below two is considered color accurate. Just wish it was a little bit lower because we saw a little bit better result in terms of the color accuracy with that Dell XPS 15 9510 and its OLED display. Now, as far as the coverage of the color gamut, we're looking at 100% sRGB, 88% Adobe RGB, 93% of the DCI-P3 wide color gamut, and 82% NTSC, making this an excellent choice if you are a content creator to do Lightroom, Photoshop, color grading, and of course, video editing. Now, as a point of reference, when I reviewed the Dell XPS 15 9510 with its OLED display, I got a perfect coverage in terms of the color gamut, as you can see from these results. But one thing to note, this has a higher refresh rate with its ProMotion 120 hertz adaptive display. You're gonna get more smooth scrolling and you're gonna have a more enhanced experience when it comes to gaming and stuff like that. The unfortunate part is the Macs are not great for gaming. We'll talk about that very soon. All right, I've been avoiding talking about this until now, but let's talk about that pink elephant in the room. And that would be, of course, the notch. We saw it with the iPhone 10, and they're on from there. And now we're seeing it here on the MacBook Pros. And I'm not really sure why Apple's doing this, to be honest with you, because they could have gone with something like a reverse notch that Lenovo does, and it would have been form and function as well, as you could have used it as a latch and so forth. I've talked about that extensively in my live streams and in other videos. But this notch here is something that one once you see it, you cannot unsee it. So I'm not the biggest fan of it, to be honest, but you can hide it with a dark wallpaper or a dark background that might help reduce looking at the notch in terms of its noticeability. But the bottom line is, I don't understand why Apple did it. I guess they wanted as small a bezels as possible, but Dell was able to put in a beautiful display and very minimal bezels without having a notch. And I don't really know why Apple did this. And it's not like you're getting face ID in terms of the camera because that camera doesn't have face ID. Now, speaking of that FaceTime camera, let's check it out. So this is the front facing camera on the brand new MacBook Pros. This is the M1 Pro version. I have the M1 Max coming as well, but let's start off with this one. Now this is a 1080p FaceTime camera, but unfortunately there's no face ID. Would have been nice to have face recognition as a way to log in. Not what you get with this one. Hopefully in the next iteration they'll have that. Uh, let me know about the video quality. Let me know about the audio quality. I am curious to know. You think this is good for your Zoom and work from home needs? Let me know. Now, for those wondering, yes, you can open the lid with one finger. Now, once you do open the lid, of course, everything boots up. And of course, you'll notice the keyboard. And this time around, it's black on black. And it also has a white backlight in terms of the backlighting. So if you want to get work done in a dark room or a dimly lit environment, it worked really well. Now, it has pretty decent key travel, although it could be a little bit better. But I thought it was very good in terms of the tactile feedback. And you never feel like your fingers will bottom out. A good job in terms of the keyboard and for extended periods of typing. And thankfully, the touch bar is gone. I was never a big proponent of it, although it wasn't terrible, it wasn't great either. Now, it's good to have those physical function keys back, and you do have an escape key that is actually pretty large and nicely sized, so that's good in that regard. And of course, the power button is also doubles as a fingerprint scanner, working well in terms of security, logging in, and of course, with Apple Pay. And I absolutely love the haptic touchpad on the MacBook Pro. It's nicely sized, very responsive. Of course, the two-finger scrolling is working well. All the gestures work well. You know, this is the best in the business. I think Windows have caught up a little bit. I think Apple retains the title of having the best touchpads, no doubt about it.
All right, let's talk about the sound. And one thing I want to point out is that my late 2019 MacBook Pro 16 has some of the best sounding speakers in the business. This has a six speaker setup as well, Dolby Atmos for enhanced spatial audio. And of course, this is actually a little bit better than the late 2019. It's actually working pretty well in terms of the sound, good volume, good mids, good bass, and it does fill up the room rather nicely. I think Apple once again did an outstanding job in terms of the audio. I'll give you a sound test in the upcoming full review. Stay tuned. Now, I just received this unit, so I'm still testing it. But so far, these initial benchmarks are really, really impressive. That's not something we've been surprised we were expecting. Really good numbers. I have the one terabyte version here as far as the SSD is concerned. Look at these really fast reads and writes. Excellent, as you can see. Now, as far as the Geekbench numbers, you can see the multi-core score is very good. The single core score is very good. And of course, I was able to run the Cinebench R23 with excellent results in both single core and multi-core performance. I'll have more to say on performance, gaming, thermals, everything in terms of battery life. Now, speaking of the battery life, I'm seeing very good battery life in the first 48 hours. It's really looking good so far. So I'm going to expect all day battery life, outstanding battery life with that 100 watt battery that this does pack. So look forward to testing that out as well. All right, let's bring it all home 48 hours in with this brand new M1 Pro MacBook Pro 16 here for 2021. And I am very impressed. The display is absolutely gorgeous. Beautiful liquid Retina XDR display, 120 hertz. As far as the refresh rate is concerned, very smooth, very fluid. Although I wasn't able to get to that 1000 sustained nits in terms of the brightness or the 1600 nits as far as peak brightness is concerned in my measurements, I was able to get as far as 510 nits and that's it. But that's still very bright nonetheless. Great performance out of that M1 Pro chip. We'll talk more about that in the full review. The initial benchmarks look really great. Good to see the return of the MagSafe SD card reader and HDMI port, although it's HDMI 2.0, not HDMI 2.1, which I would have preferred. Expect outstanding battery life with that 100 watt hour battery looking good so far. 1080p webcam, but although it's not a Face ID webcam, that would have been better for face recognition, not here. Hopefully next iteration will get that. It's not upgradable in terms of the SSD or the RAM. I don't think there's any way for you to upgrade that or get inside this laptop for that matter. Display is not 4K, although it would have been nice, especially for a content creator to have more resolution, would have been better. No USB-A port, of course, would have been great to have that in addition to those return of those other ports. HDMI 2.0, as I said, not 2.1. And yes, this is prohibitively expensive, not meant for the average consumer though. I think it's meant towards the professional content creator. There's a lot to like here, ladies and gentlemen, but I think if you're a Windows user, this is not the laptop for you. And I think if you're a gamer, this is definitely not the laptop for you. You wanna get a dedicated gaming laptop that will be more optimized for playing games on the Windows side of things, of course. And of course, if you're someone who likes to upgrade your laptop with more RAM or more storage yourself, you won't be able to do that with this laptop. And of course, that price tag is very high. But I think Apple has a pretty special laptop here. I think it's a game changer in a lot of ways but don't count intel out just yet ladies and gentlemen we got some great stuff from amd as well the 12th gen intel products are coming with the alder lake and i think that's going to be a lot of good stuff coming out of that so what i'm seeing here is some great competition between the oems and the chip makers and so forth and that's going to benefit the end user at the end of the day and that's all good but i like what apple did here and i look forward to putting it through its paces to bring you my full review coming very soon so what do you think about this bad boy, the M1 Pro, MacBook Pro 16 in space gray? Of course, you could also get it in silver, but I like the space gray. I've traditionally gone with space gray. A little bit more boxy look, a la 2009. A lot of the ports that were missing in the previous iterations are back. MagSafe, SD card, HDMI, although it's HDMI 2.0, not 2.1. And of course, you get the three Thunderbolt 4 ports that are full service, data charge display out. So you're not limited to the charging with that MagSafe connector. You can use a USB-C charger, it just won't be as fast. Now, as far as this laptop is concerned, the M1 Pro, the initial benchmarks are very impressive. I have 16 gigabytes of unified RAM. You can get this up to 32 on the Pro version. And of course, on the M1 Max, you can go up to 64 gigabytes of unified RAM. We'll get into that in more in the 
upcoming full review. A little bit heavy this time around, of course, 4.7 pounds, 2.1 kilograms, a little bit thicker. Again, a little bit more heft, something to be aware of if you're going for the 14 inch versus the 16 inch, this will actually be a little bit heavier. But again, I'll get, I'll take this extra weight if you're giving me those ports and the great battery life. And speaking of the battery life, looking good so far, 100 watt hour battery, looking at all day plus, I'll bring you the final numbers in my full review. Now the display is a 16.2 inch XDR ProRes Retina display that will get up to 1,000 nits in terms of brightness, in terms of sustained brightness, and 1,600 nits in terms of peak brightness. I didn't get anywhere near that. I got 510 nits in my measurements, although that is very bright. So nothing to be concerned about, just not what Apple claimed, just something to be aware of. Now, the big thing, of course, with this is going to be the price tag. I paid $27.99 plus tax here in Nevada, over almost $3,000 when it's all said and done. And that's only 16 gigabytes of RAM, but more than enough for most people. Again, this is geared towards professionals rather than the average consumer. But even at that price, this is a lot of money to pay. Although if you are a professional, you get a lot of use out of this. And of course, it will be very efficient and it will give you great battery life. So the power, performance, efficiency, it's all there. But I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know in that comment section below. Now, I will be putting it through its paces over the next week or so, bring you my complete full review. So stay tuned for that. That's coming. I'll also check out the M1 Max. I'll bring that in. And maybe I'll even get a 14-inch in as well. We'll see how all that goes over the next couple of weeks. But I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know in that comment section below. So please hit the like button. Please subscribe. Please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.